Hi everybody, so last night was the series finale of Lost and there's been a lot of controversy about it. Um, I thought it was a good ending, I liked it a lot. Um, I kind of like how they didn't do some sci-fi thing where like the island is this big, you know, it's holding this evil and then they unleashed it to the world and you know, how it's not like this alternate universe away from what really is going on in the world. I kind of like how they didn't really stretch it so far from the truth, which, you know, even though Lost is such a stretch from the truth, it kind of tied it in more towards, I guess, a realistic point of view. Um, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. Um, I kind of like how they started it kind of the way that they ended it. It came full circle with Jack, the most obvious with Jack, his eye opening in the very first episode to, you know, the start of Lost, to all of this, and how it ends with him very slowly closing his eye and accepting that he's dead and dying and letting the island go and letting himself move on past it. And I thought that poetic nature, that symbolism right there was just so profound to the whole meaning of Lost. And I don't know, it, it was really beautiful to me. And I like how they tied it back to the theme, which I thought of Lost was love. And how love is what kind of, you know, helped them move on past all of this stuff. And it didn't necessarily have to be like a soulmate, a physical manifestation. Like for Sun and Jin, it was when they saw their daughter on the sonogram, when she, when she saw the heartbeat and they said it was a girl, that's when they started flashing and remembering the love that they had for each other and this little girl even though Jin obviously never knew her and they just remembered that love and the events of the island and living together with Jack and Kate and Sawyer and everybody and it's what helped them let go that it was a time in their life that they were in so much love but they were ready to move past it and they were ready to enter whatever that they were entering, which brings another controversial point where people were very upset that it had a lot of biblical allusions and people are saying it's very Christian. And to me, I don't know if it's necessarily purely Christian, even though it does have biblical, you know, allusions to it, um, but they never perfectly say heaven because it depends on whether you believe in anything at all or nothing. Um, it's their soul or their memory or this energy that every human has that you can't deny, it's that letting go. Whether it's going to heaven or just disappearing completely, that's that's what that warm light was at the end. Even though it was a church and people are like, no, it's definitely heaven that they were going to. Um, I think the reason they didn't say it is so that people can kind of broaden that to whatever they think that paradise or wherever they were going to was. Um, I thought it was it was very nice. It was a very way, a very good way to end it, and how everybody got together, and it connected everybody from the first season, minus Michael and Walt. And I liked. People are kind of confused about the Ben thing, and my theory is the reason that Ben didn't go into the church was because he was waiting for his daughter, for her to let go and move on, and because he is a part of her life. She, he is a such a connection to her and not necessarily the group of Lost. I mean, he's obviously connected to Hurley and you see that right there when he says you were great number two and you can see that connection but he wasn't necessarily connected so profoundly to everybody else like all of them were in that church where everybody was touched by each other. There was a connection there. They were a family. And um, it's kind of like Daniel Faraday and Charlotte and I think the reason that he didn't go with them is because Daniel was Charlotte's world and Charlotte was Daniel's and the reason that Charlotte didn't know yet was because she is fighting it kind of like Jack was. She's not ready to let go yet. And she's waiting for him, for Daniel, and possibly, you know, I don't know, other people that possibly were important to them. Um, I know a lot of people are upset that they had many questions that were unanswered, like the island and the magnetic thing and um, the fountain of youth thing? I mean, what is that? People were kind of upset that they didn't answer that. And the black smoke. I mean, not the black smoke, what am I saying? Jacob's cabin. Um, they didn't answer that. And um, I don't know. I think the reason they didn't do that was because they're leaving it up to your interpretation to conclude it the way you want to conclude it. I mean, it obviously ends with them all dying, but everything ends with death. And they're leaving it up to your interpretation. And that's why they don't show you what 
the others that get off on that plane do when they get off on that plane. It's how you're going to kind of connect it. Like, do you think that Kate stays always waiting for Jack and helps Claire raise Aaron and it's just those two waiting to meet their soulmates again? And what does Sawyer do? Does he become a cop? Um, and they leave it up to your interpretation to see how they would live because that's not the point of Lost. The point of Lost was not the importance of the island and all of the questions and all the mystery to it. The importance is of the people and how they all stayed connected. Kind of like what Jack said, you either live together or die alone. And they died together, kind of. Well, moved on together. I mean, obviously they died alone, but they move on together, which was so profound, I think, to the whole arc of Lost. And I don't know, I thought it was really nice. Um, so tell me what you think. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you cry for about an hour and a half like I did? So I don't know. I would love to hear a comment, so put a comment down below, or down here, and get back to me. All right, bye guys.